Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another Gunplan Review and today I'm taking a look at another Gundam Build Divers Rerise Kit and this of course is the High Grade Gundam GP Rasetsu 10. Another one of Ogre's absolutely crazy, off the charts, mad looking Gundams once again from Gundam Build Divers. Anyway, this can build two different kits, we'll talk about that soon. But as usual, this video right here would not be possible without those absolutely awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you do want one of your own, there's a link down there in the description. Now here we go. So before I actually get into the review proper, I will mention something about this kit, which is pretty cool. And it kind of went for the Ogre Jin X we would have seen before. So move this out of the way for a bit of an explanation. So to the uneducated or untrained eye, you might think this is meant to be some kind of Oni or something like that, but that's not necessarily the case. So first off, of course, this kit right here is based on the Gundam GP2. So they kind of adapted it into the name here. So if you remember the Ogre Jin X over here, it used the kanji for Jin, which actually is like Ha or Yaiba, which is the edged part of a blade. So it's kind of getting to the sword aspect of it. As for the GP Rasetsu Ten right here. They've kind of taken the two aspect as the Tsu part from Rasetsu Ten down here. And as for what that is, this is kind of like a Buddhist creature. I don't know what to describe it as, like a devil. This right here being based on the Japanese variant, which is the Rasetsu Ten, which in turn is based on the Buddhist Rakshasa, which apparently is interchangeable with Asura. But if you do Google image search Rakshasa, all you seem to get is furries with backwards hands, but honestly, that name down there is such a mouthful that this thing right here, the Gundam GP Rasetsu Ten, hitherto will be referred to as this thing. Now here we go. But first off, we're going to have a quick look around the box so you can check out all the details, pause it whenever you want to read all the deets. There is the front and rear view of the finished kit. There is the blurb, pause now if you want to read. Around on the second side of the box, we have all the information on the weapons, equipment, and whatnot. Hopefully that will be readable there. I'll stop so you can take a quick glance if you want to. And all the way over here, we've got some more kits that are available as part of the high-grade Build Divers line. While we're talking blurbs, here's the manual. Right there is the official art of the mobile suit as well as its specs. It is worth noting that we can build two different variants of this kit. There is the blurb about the pilot Oga and another bit of a background behind this thing. Around on the other side of the manual now we've got a whole bunch of other information as well as this bit of a cop-out on the material Gunpla. Of course this is based on the Gundam GP-02A from Stardust Memory but in this manual it talks about the other variant of the kit you can build in this box. We also have the Oni no Mei mode which is a drop-down visor. Some awesome GN revolver bazookas which have their own inbuilt GN drives. These are pseudo GN drives or GN drive Taos, so not as powerful as your actual celestial being full GN drives. We've got those swords once again, just like we would have seen with the Jin X, the absolutely awesome flexible ogre binders. These are so cool, definitely the best aspect of this kit, but we'll be seeing them very, very soon. And included in those then is the ogre claw. Once again, all that information up on the screen for you to read at your own leisure. So anyway, that right there is what this thing looks like just out of the box snapped together with the stickers attached and some panel lining as usual. When I do panel lining, it's only on the front. Now I'm gonna say it right off the bat, this kit is a mixed bag. The actual mobile suit itself is very old school and not very exciting, but the stuff around on the back is pretty cool. But anyway, as usual, I'm gonna go take a look at the mobile suit first, then take a look at the equipment a little bit later on. So first off, let's go with the base suit. So finally, there it is without all of that stuff up on its back. And this is heavily based on the old high-grade GP-02A, which at first did make me wince a little bit. Originally, I thought this kit would be awful because of how old the kit it's based on is, but that's not the case. Sure, it doesn't do a whole lot, but it's sturdy, it's stocky, it's strong, and I like it. Also, I will mention that my worries were reinforced by this right here. So this, of course, is the high-grade Ogre Jin X, from Gundam Build Divers. The original season of Gundam Build Divers did spawn some of the worst high-grade Gundam kits I've ever looked at, and this is definitely up there with the likes of the Cheese Master and Cheese Blaster and whatever they were called, I don't remember. But this right here is a kit that did not hold up. But that does make me happy to say that this kit is a whole lot better than that. But anyway, goodbye. 
So anyway, there is the full 360 spin of what this kit looks like without the attached equipment up on the back. Once again, this is a very simple kit. A lot of the new parts do have some nice panel lining potential up on the shoulders, but besides that, it is a little bit plain. There's some nice detail around the chest, etc. And on the whole, it's pretty cool looking. I'm guessing that the old high-grade GP02A was actually a fairly okay kit back in its day. There's a couple of stickers on here that is, of course, down on the knees, and there's one there up on that shoulder section. Otherwise, it does look quite cool. There is some hollow segments here and there. In general, they're not all that apparent. And we do have some nice clear sections up on the head. So I'm going to jump into the articulation early in this review just to get it out of the way because there isn't a whole lot to say. This kit, first off, build-wise, it's like a brick. I mean, it is seriously like a brick. That is kind of, I guess, the plus side of the extremely basic articulation. But once again, it's the GPO 2 You can't be expecting that much from it. But yeah, this is extremely old school. For example, at the neck here, we only have a single ball joint that doesn't really give us all that much. That's looking up. That is looking down. We do have that Oni no Me mode, which is just kind of like a simple sliding mechanism. So that's it down. Then it just pops up like that for the normal eyes. A bit of a forward and back here in the shoulder. Not a lot. We've got that full 360 spin as usual. And this thing has the stubbiest little arms. Full spin up here. This thing probably gets the award for worst elbow bend I've seen in a long, long time. That is it. But it makes up for that with this pretty cool ratchet joint, or similar to a ratchet joint in here. This actually has a clicky, clicky, very strong mechanism to it. Here, have a listen. Awesome. The waist in here is a simple old school ball joint. So that really just gives you a bit of a wiggle, not much. As a rotation, it can go all the way around. Ball joints, once again, for the skirting armor, so they just kind of move up, up, nothing around here on the back. Once again, fairly old school with the hips here, it's just a ball joint hip. We've got that forward back rotation here. No motion here at the upper leg, so no spin, sadly. And as for those kicks, there is front, not too bad. There is to the side, not great, so that's as close to the splits that it will get. And there it is, out to the back, so fairly blocked there. Next up there, there is the bend at the knee, so fairly pathetic once again. And at the ankle, we have forward and back here, and a ball joint down further. So let's see what we can get out of this thing on the ground. Anyway, there is the leg all the way to the back. That is pretty good. To the front, we've got that there, which is next to nothing. And then from the side, we've got side to side. So again, fairly basic. However, it's pretty cool the way this all separates out like so. That is pretty awesome. So this thing right here is not a posing machine, but at the same time, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. However, all I look at this as is a mount for these absolutely awesome arms. And speaking of which, onto the accessories. Oh yeah, but beforehand, this was the sticker sheet. I almost forgot to show it. So now moving on to the accessories, and here is this thing with absolutely everything that it comes with. So this can be built up two different ways, just like we would have seen before. So we've got this guy down here, which is the GP Rasetsu, and this up here, which is the GP Rasetsu 10. So at first, these kind of look the same, but there is some differences. And I'll build this one first, followed by this one. So first up in here, we have the binders, and these I absolutely adore. These are much cooler than I thought they would be. So these attach up onto the shoulder by this little bit here, so we do have a nice bit of articulation here. This is the thruster round back, this doesn't do anything. This is the standard GP Rasetsu version, so this is not the main event of the kit. This is more of a throwback, I guess. So the difference is this claw section here. First off, we do have the GNI's blasters, so that's these in here. These aren't color accurate, the central parts are meant to be yellow. There is no stickers included. That right there is what they should look like. This right here is what they do look like, so you might need some yellow paint. And right there is your mix. So the claws on this version are much gnarlier looking than what we see on the later version. So these can open out like this. We've got a second bend right here, and these are some big grabbing claws. I mean, your average size Gundam is in for it. Look at that. Grabbing on to the G40 like it's absolutely nothing. That is cool. And to make matters worse, or better I guess for us, that hole right there is compatible with the beam 
effect that we get in here for this beam effect coming out of the end of those. That is so cool. And if it was holding on to this here Gundam, that pilot would be screwed. Honestly, though, if that was not awesome enough already, this has hidden articulation in here. This moves out like this, can bend like an actual arm, and has full rotation inside of that. So even while it's up on the back, you've got yourself a big articulated arm with a massive claw. Now let's get this thing attached. So these just pop up here on the pegs up on the shoulder. Never mind that arm falling off. That wasn't meant to happen. You best be getting back on there. Of course, we don't just have one of these. We've got the two. The other one is exactly the same, just slightly reversed. And there we go. How cool does that look? Once you get the articulation going on these, these just look like a pair of big, awesome arms. And because these can move around so much, it almost makes the fact that this doesn't move very much itself kind of irrelevant. Because you can do all the posing with these big, massive, awesome arms. So, so I personally forgive the mobile suit itself for not doing that much when it's got a pair of awesome arms like this. Next up in here, we've got this Club Com Beam Rifle, which kind of reminds me of the Death Army. Clubby clubby business end up here. We've got a handle here for using it as a sort of beam rifle, or as it actually is, which is a beam bazooka. We've got this spike on the end here for some uh, nasty blows. And as awesome as this thing is, it is not color accurate. So this section down here should all be gray. In here should be black, like what we're seeing right here in this image. So you may have to get your paint out once again. So this kit only has one pair of hands, so they just slot on in here. Actually, it does have a second pair of hands from the GP02 on the runner, so if you want to use the GP02's weapons with it, you can. I just won't be doing that in this review. Quite similar to what we would have seen with the Jin X, these are the GN Ogre Swords. Whoops, that is not meant to be on there. That is an attachment adapter we'll talk about soon. We do have two of these guys included in here, and there is an example of it beside the one that would have came with the Jin X. So both of these can attach together. I'm curious if the one from the Gen X can attach. Are these compatible? Huh, they are. Just in case you're thinking of any sort of custom, these two handles seem to be extremely similar. Anyway, let's attach these two the way that they should. That is just like this. And this is one big weapon. So anyway, to attach these into the hand, you're going to have to pop the back off of that. Standard procedure for a high grade. We're gonna pop them on in that double mode and then throw it up on the shelf for that shelf presence test. So there is this thing up on the shelf once again just for that shelf presence test. So I will mention as usual that the majority of kits up on the shelf are master grade so that will make this look a little bit more diminutive than it actually is. But for a high grade, this is one big old boy. Everything is loaded up on there, including the Beam Sabers, the GN Ogre Sword, as well as the Kanasaibo Big Old Beat Stick. And this right here is the basic version of this kit, so now it's time to upgrade it to the high-grade GP Rasetsu 10. So here is this big boy down off the shelf, and the only real difference between this and the 10 variant of it is the claws are different. So you just remove these three claws by unclipping them from here here and here and then we have this little pair of claw extensions so there's not as much articulation on these guys but they do spin they also have a little adapter for holding the big old gn ogre swords which we'll see soon and these just clip on as simple as that right there so now these arms are a little bit longer can spin a bit more but don't look quite as threatening as these big old gnarly looking guys over here. And technically, you can no longer use the beam sabers with these anymore, but you can kind of jam it into that hole, sort of. It doesn't feel quite right, but you can kind of, maybe, maybe, kind of, kind of, maybe. Nah, not really. Can't use them anymore. Also, I totally forgot to mention about these Jin Ogre swords here. When this is in the standard variant of this kit, then these can be stored on these pegs up here. But when this is in the 10 variant, they get stored on these pegs down here. So technically in the standard variant, you could pop them on there too, but this time around, these pegs are for using with these. So next up in here, we've got the GN Revolver Bazooka. The first thing I'll mention once again is this is not color accurate. It is meant to be all in gray, but it's in this purple, which is still okay. The barrel needs to be blacked out here because that looks a little bit lame. But one thing that this really gets me thinking about is, does GBN have any rules whatsoever? 
I mean, like, the main character seems to be the only guy who can summon in random extra parts at will. And this is a weapon powered by a single GN drive. I mean, it has its own dedicated GN drive. Sure, this is a pseudo GN drive, as in one that would have been used by a Jinx. But if Gunpla has freedom, why didn't Oga just use actual full-on GN drives? That would make more sense. It'd be more powerful. But anyway, this doesn't do anything. Let's attach it. Actually, no, this little segment down here can pull down for the handle, so this can be used popped into the hands like so. But using these grey little adapter segments, these can just pop up onto the back, handy as that right there. So just to finally show what these swords look like attached, I'm gonna pop one onto the butt so you can see what that looks like stored away, and flip this around to do something extra special with this thing, which I adore, and that is attach one of the GN Ogre swords into this claw. So these claws have already raised the awesome game of these arms. These can open out like so, but using this little adapter cuff, that can just pop onto the handle of the sword like this, holds on perfectly, and then just slotting this in in this kind of double connection here, one into the back claw, one in here, and then these fold over the sword like this, then the mobile suit can essentially just stand there chilling while these arms do all the work, including the long range attacks up here. That is insane. So that is why I totally forgive this mobile suit here for not being able to do a whole lot, because these arms totally make up for it. And as for the sort of poses, etc. these can pull off, I'll put them in the outro spins. Anyway, that right there is it for the review, and this is one of those kits that's so hard to rank. Because essentially the mobile suit itself is pretty meh, old school but definitely boring. The mobile suit itself is on the bronze tier end of the spectrum, whereas the arms I really love. Those I would have given mm, silver or so, but the enjoyment factor is much much higher than that. So on the whole, I'm gonna give this kit right here silver tier. Because it's got so much going on, there's two different builds to make. Even though the mobile suit itself is quite... Basic by modern standards, it is solid and won't give you any trouble, and it's the perfect anchor for those awesome cool arms. There's a lot of issues when it comes to color accuracy, etc. in here, so it is definitely on the bottom end of silver. But in a way, I feel this kit right here is worth it just for those awesome shoulder arms. I didn't mention it in the review, but this does not have the basic backpack adapter, so that does mean you cannot stick it onto other kits very easily. Sure, it's not the greatest kit around, but it's by far not the worst, and definitely a huge step up from Bill Divers' Ogre Gin X. Anyway, if you do want one of your own, as always, you can get yours through that link in the description from those awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. As always, make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I will see you next time. Once again, all my unending thanks to each and every one of you guys. Whether you just watch the videos, like the videos, share them, or support me on the channel memberships and over on Patreon like Craig Jerry, Kaiser721, Bolwig, Tyler Sanders, Caleb Engelhart, Hank Handsome, and Sean T.